Hello, in this video, I will show you how to convert double type to integer in C sharp. Now, it is a very simple and very straightforward procedure. You use one simple method and one simple line and it should work. But uh, there is a sort of fail safe device and that fail safe is not an exception. Uh, it doesn't work really well, so sometimes you have to handle it properly, or you have to make sure that your double value is actually an integer. Now, personally, I prefer to use doubles instead of integers, just in case. I think it's a lot quicker, you have to deal with fewer things, but sometimes you have to deal with integers, and this will be quite useful. So I will show you uh, how it sort of all works and how you can prevent those issues, okay? Now here, I have a couple of arrangements. So I have a simple double, we call it double D, okay? And then 0 0.5, the value. So this is double, okay? But we want an integer, so it will not work. But see, if I would run it, it will stop at our breakpoint right here. You see, it stops right here. So it did not fail with exception, but if I look at the value, it's zero. So basically what happens is if it fails to convert, it will give you zero. And that can be a real problem because double, if it works, it can be zero. So you can't really check uh, for it to be zero to see if it's correct or wrong, if it failed or if it succeeded. You can't really do that. So that's uh, kind of a problem, right? And with that, what you have to do is you have to check the double value beforehand, okay? Now I'm going to stop it like that. And here we have a bit of an arrangement, okay? We have a bit of an arrangement. Now, mind you, this first arrangement, convert to in32 would work perfectly if it was an actual integer in the double, okay? But it's not, so it's not working. Now, this is one way to do it. Uh, you can actually wrap it in an if statement. Sometimes that might work better, okay? If you don't want to deal with this additional exception uh, uh, because that's sort of only way to actually fail this. Or you can have a default value set to the integer instead, okay? But we have two strings, so we check D. Then we convert that to string, and then we check if the string contains a little dot, okay? If it does, it won't work, it won't be an integer, therefore, we can throw our little exception, custom exception, which says wrong value, okay? It says wrong value, now I'll just run it to show you how this uh, whole thing works. You see right here, we get into the exception now, it failed properly, and if I hover on this, it says wrong value. So this is how you actually throw your custom exception. If, if you need that, if you ever need that, you do throw, then new exception, and you can put in a message for it. Uh, you can do this uh, anyway in your code. Uh, it doesn't have to be in this particular arrangement. It, it will work uh, fine anywhere else in your method. Okay, but if it, if it does not contain the dot, you can convert it like this. Okay, just a simple convert to int32. Now we can watch some of my other videos on conversions. I show you how to convert an integer array to a byte array. I show you how to convert uh, a string to an integer where you can actually use kind of a simple arrangement, uh, similar rather arrangement uh, uh, to check if the value is proper. One more thing to note is that integer right here, this int, is int32, so you have to convert to int32, okay? 64 would be big int and small int would be 16. The names uh, are different depending on, on the language you use, uh, but the idea is usually pretty much the same. You have 16 for small, you have to 32 for that sort of general, and then 64 for big, large int, whichever word they uh, might use. Uh, so do check out uh, my other videos. Uh, take a look at my Patreon. You'll get some great deals on my courses and support this uh, uh, channel with uh, free education and also subscribe to this channel. Now with that, we will conclude this video.